Again, this is Dragonus 4 coming at you. And today I'm doing a little something different. I'm going to start a new segment for my YouTube channel here. Uh, I'm calling uh, My Excursions into the Unknown. I've kind of hinted, hinted at it with some of my craft projects on how to do witchcrafting and stuff. Uh, but this is going to be like different sto different true stories of my experiences with paranormal and whatever. And um, I'm going to start you out with, like, with, a, with episode number one. And uh, on episode number one, I'm going to teach you about uh, my experience with what's known as the Bone Game. Now, the Bone Game is a game that... Um, a lot of different pagans and stuff uh, play, and it's a game of, where you could develop your psychic um, abilities fairly well. Now, I'm not saying that if you play it a lot, you're going to become like a mutant X-Men or something, you know, cause I, but you might get, be able to, like, read thoughts and stuff a little bit better and whatever, but I'll tell you how to play it. Um... Okay, now it's called the bone game because it used to be uh, traditionally played with like a um, a bone from an animal, or you know, and um, you would use like a rib bone or or you know something like that. Um, for the people that don't want to do, you know, that don't want to use animal parts. You could play it with like a, a small branch, you know, from like a twi you know, a branch or something. Or um, since I don't have a branch, I'm, I'm just using an example as a pencil. You could use whatever object you want to play it with. Um, now, the rules are it's a game that's played with, you have to have about five people in a minimum setting or as many as you want in a maximum setting and uh, the levels are for a novice setting there's three uh levels and for a advanced setting it's usually uh four and for, you know for the mid setting and then for like an advanced setting is usually five the object is to uh capture your team's uh, flags basically okay uh, and how it works there's one person that's a referee you have to have at least four players that aren't referees um, and the object is there you set up a on a field on the open area area you, not that you have to have it in the field you could probably play this indoors if you got enough space and whatever but um, there's a middle section that's a neutral zone that you're not supposed to enter into, which is about three yards in space. And then there's another line. So, so you, even if you don't put a, you could make an invisible line. You don't have to actually draw a line on the ground, but, uh, you know, you could put up like maybe a little marker like a little stone or something at the corners so the uh, uh, so the people don't know so they'll know not to step over it so that's a neutral territory in the middle okay now you have your zone it could be as big as you want it to be basically like if, for a smaller setting you might want about maybe five yards or so you know on each side and now the way this works is the object is to capture your flags, your opponent's flags. And you do that by taking your what's known as your bone, and, and I'm using a pencil because I don't have anything to represent this. I don't have anybody to play it with right now. So uh, you take your bone, and the object is one team is supposed to hide the bone between, you know, your, you could huddle up and whatever. But now the objective you're not allowed to talk at all you can't talk so what when your team gets the bone you have to like secretly without talk you can have a strategy meeting before the before you officially start you're allowed the referee allows you a strategy meeting so if you wanted to tell your teammates what you're going to do beforehand but once once you officially start you're not allowed to talk you can make animal noises. You can make sounds. 
Uh, you can move around. You can dance around. Um, you can make arm movements, leg movements, whatever, but you just can't talk once it's once you are starting. Um, now, the opposite player, the opposite team, uh, one, one person is picked from the opposite player player's team to be a seeker of sorts. And their objective is they have to co use their psychic energies to concentrate on, on who has the bone uh, on, in their possession on the opposing team. Okay. Then, when you're ready, the, the, the referee calls start, and, you know, the one team with the bone, they'll start moving around. They'll, they could pass it back and forth secretly uh, to one another. And then when the... Um, the uh, opposing team's members, the seeker, when they when they feel they're ready, uh, they can point out to the person that they feel is the seek is holding the bone. Okay, so in a, in this example, if I had the bone on the one team, you know, and I like to say I have it behind my back or something, and then if I was the seeker on the other team. I would point out at the person, you know, use my finger and point at the person that I think has it. Okay, and then the referee will temporarily uh, put a timeout on the game to, and they will ask the person to verify if they have it or not. If they don't have it, they are obligated to show their hands empty. You know, they have to bring their hands out and show that they don't have it. If they do have it, they're obligated to show that they do have it in their hands. If the person has it in their hands and the seeker guessed it right, they capture a flag of their, oppo their opposing team that they're going against. And the object, again, is to capture all the flags. Once all the flags are captured, uh, you win the game. And you can capture flags back the same way like um you know until the uh, until all the flags are captured you could actually capture them back like say if somebody captured one or two of your flags and you and then when it comes to your turn uh and then your team uh gets gets it right then then um you can c capture your flags back now how you how you do that is after the seeker has guessed right, then they can have another guess. You know, they, but if they miss on their guess, that's when, it, when the uh, play exchanges hands to the other team. So if, if the seeker misses on their guess, like say I pointed to someone and um, they didn't have the bone. Then that I'd be wrong. So then it go, the play goes to the other team. So the team that was had the bone passes the bone over to the uh, team that had that was doing the seeking. And now the one that had the bone um, will now be the seekers. Um, and again, you only have one person on your team being the seeker, while the rest of the people hang to the back of your uh, of your area. You, you know, you have to be on the playing field, but they're not actively playing, okay? But they can lend their psychic energies to the seeker to help if they think they, if they, think they can. Now, I've played this a couple of times, and with my experience with it, I was really good at it. Because <laughs> um, I, I work with totem energies, um, and I have a lot of different totem animals, so I was uh, able to actually send my totem spirits out behind the other players that uh, could actually pick up on where they had it, uh, who was holding it. Um, it's a really fun game. It's very simple to play. And again, it will help to develop your psychic energies really well. Um, the only trouble is it's not a game that you can play by yourself. You actually have to have at least five people. You know, or if you're not doing it with a referee, then you you know you'd have to have at least four. But then you have to you're seriously honor bound to to actually show, 
you know, you, you know, and see that the referee serves a purpose because, you know, they can kind of control, make sure everything's up and up and everything and make sure that you're not crossing the line. Because if you cross the line accidentally too, um, or if you speak accidentally, then your flag will be captured to the, to your opponent. Um, so you're not, again, you're not allowed to cross that middle section of, uh, area and you're not allowed to speak, but it is a very, it's a really fun game. Um, so, you know, if you think that you'd like to develop your psychic powers or whatever, may, maybe gather some friends out and, uh, you know, go play this and give it a try. And if you do uh, and uh, you enjoy it, spread it, spread it around to other people and so they can, uh, play it and they'll learn about it. Well, anyways, this was episode number one, and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.